Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. Uh, what you see in the vise is a bit of a mouthful. I call it the Black Mamba Booby. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. This one's at size 8 and it's on a heavy wire hook in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, it's the F01, it's at 6 so and as you can see it's black. Now first thing I'm going to do is catch on my thread just in behind the eye. I've already given it quite a bit of wax and I'm going to run that all the way up to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook. And at this end, I'm going to build a little bump, which is going to help me with uh, the tail not getting tangled around the, the shank of the hook. You might notice when you're fishing these big lures, sometimes the tail's got a habit of wrapping itself around the bend of the hook. So putting a little bump in at the end here really does help with that. So I built my bump. And the first material I'm going to add is uh, from Troutline. This is Troutline streamer here. It's uh, golden yellow. Now, the reason I'm doing this fly is I've just been starting to learn to tie some pike flies and I got carried away a bit and I thought I'd try something else and uh, I started messing about with a variation on the humongous, uh, which is a really effective fly. So this is what I've come up with, and I call it the Black Mamba. And, and the reason for that is uh, it's, it's not what you would think. Apart from the pack, the, the fly is quite black. I've taken just a few of the strands, but uh, when my kids were coming up, and I was in the, uh, you know, watching all the kids' movies phase, you know, you, the adults, parents, you, you sit through a lot of rubbish with your kids and uh, you just put up with it because that's, what's, that's what parents do. But when they got through the sort of rubbish, we went along and watched this film called Megamind. Some of you might have heard of it. Uh, and it's certainly worth a watch if you haven't, even if you're an adult, it's great fun. Okay, so I've, I've got my tail, uh, my initial tail, which is the golden yellow. And next, I'm going to add some marabou. And what I'm going to be using is the Comp Candy and it's the Black Jack Marabou. I should have got it out the packet before I started, but I'm going to need a couple of plumes of this. So I'll just grab a couple of plumes, like so. Uh, they're both just the same. Now what I want to do with this is, it might seem quite wasteful, but I'm going to come in with my scissors and snip the center away, like so. And then I'm gonna bring back what remains in a bunch like that. And I'm gonna lay that on. I don't want it quite as long as the golden tail I've got here. So I'm gonna stop that just there and tie it on. Yep, it's easy to see that I've been tying quite a few pike flies away uh, with the size of this, but I think this is going to do me a turn. I'm going to try and get up to Rutland very soon, and uh, this is one of the flies I'll be giving a go. So I'll just remove that, it's not a total loss, uh, there's still enough um, marabou on this to do several cormorants, so I'll just put that back in the packet. And what I'm going to do is just tidy up this area here. The end fibres is, is where you get all the movement and that's what, you know, when I tied this, it's what, what I had in mind. Oh, this is all about movement in this fly. Big booby eyes, soft, very soft hackling, lots of movement in the tail. And uh, the tip ends of the marabou is what gives you that. So next then, I'm going to add another Troutline product, this is called Reflex here. Now it's very, very soft. I've already taken out a, 
a bit, it's a bit like flashy boo in the nature, but even thinner. So what I want to do with this is I'm going to catch it initially in on my side. A couple of turns. And then the stuff that's facing forward, I'm going to bring around behind to catch onto your side. And I'm going to run that all the way back. Now once I've got that in, I've got to hold everything now and I just want to shorten up without cutting and just cutting in a sawing motion to keep that raggedy. Pull it all back and if you like at this point a little bit of dampness on your fingers, a bit of saliva just helps you keep the whole thing under control. Next we take another plume of uh, comp candy and I'm going to again come in from behind here and just take away the center stem. I'm going to put that stem to the side and then with the marabou I can stroke it all back and catch it in like so. And uh, I really feel the benefit of using a 6 aught thread for this this pattern. It's uh, You can really clamp down on the materials. So as you can see, we've got a fair old bush going on at the back here. No pun intended. Okie dokie. So uh, I'm going to come in now and remove the waste in pieces and then I can tidy this bit up at the front. Okay. That's looking hunky-dory. I'm just looking where my bump is and I want to get all the materials to come back to approximately where I started that bump. And I'm still a wee bit off back a bit yet and that's looking pretty good maybe another two turns for good measure again I'm going to lick my thumb and forefinger just pull all that back and that's looking not too bad at this stage next we're going to tie in a wire rib and what I've got here is just a, a medium silver wire. I'm going to catch that in the length of the body and then come all the way back. Now, the body material itself, this is proper old school. It's from Lure Flash and it's some pearl and black fritz. We used to use this fritz on the Pearson Sparkler. Uh, so I'll just take a little bit of that off. There isn't much left, so. I'm keen to save that for what it's intended for. I'm just going to strip away some of the uh, fritz itself, which is easy on the old school stuff, and leave a bit of core to catch in. And then I can clamp right down as hard as you like, and bring my thread up to about quarter of an inch from the eye of the hook. Then I'm going to bring round the fritz. After each turn, I'm just slicking it back with my thumb and forefinger. Uh, you can you can wet your thumb and forefinger if you find it necessary. I think it's okay dry. All the way up. To meet your thread. Then I can clamp down on that, like so. Two or three turns, a couple of turns in front, and you can remove the remainder of your fritz. If you haven't got um, the original lure flash stuff, just use what you've got. I'm sure it will not make any difference whatsoever. Okay, that's looking good. And you know, yeah, I could just finish this off actually and it'd probably fish, but there's still a bit of work to do. So next then, 
I'm going to bring in my first hackle, which is uh, just this old hen cape. It's, it's got some lovely speckled fibers and I've already pre-selected a feather here. And it's quite a big feather, you see. And I'm going to just cut the stalk to a manageable size and then catch that in at the front here. And then I'll grab my hackle pliers. Just going to bend the stalk back so it sits where I want it to sit. And the first turn I'm going to bring right round virtually on itself. And I've picked a really good feather for this actually, it's nice and big. Again, it's going to generate lots of movement. So I'll get maybe four turns of it, maybe five if I'm lucky. The more the merrier really with this. And bring it all the way back, that's looking stunning. Pleased with that. So I've got a hold of my wire now in my other hand. And I'm going to just initially get a turn of wire in to hold that hackle into place and then I can come all the way up capturing the hackle and uh, <laughs> I can't help but think of that film while I'm tying this fly Megamind I mean if you haven't seen it go and watch it it's absolutely hilarious and and you'll get you'll get it then when um, you know you think of the black mamba you can think of this fly in mega mind. Okay, I brought my, my rib up and trapped it in at the ends there, and I'm just going to tidy up that bit now. Once I've got that in place, I can spin my wire away and then come in with a pair of scissors and cut that feather away. That's looking pretty good. I'm a little concerned that I've not left enough space at the front. So what I'm going to do is just come back with my thread a little bit further. Because you do need quite a lot of space at the front here. So that was my bad. But that's looking okay. I've saved it, saved the day. Okay, next I've got a black hen cape, or a hen cape that's been dyed black, should I say. This is a lovely soft feather, and uh, I've already selected a feather from the cape. And what I want to do with this one is uh, capture the tip in like so, and just bring the rest of them feathers back. So I've got a tag. Then, at the front here, I'm going to catch that in. And uh, it might seem a lot of effort, but I think this is going to go great gun for me. And I'll let you know, obviously, once I've uh, been up to Rutland and given it a fish. Now, what I want out of this is about three turns. So... Every time I go round, I'm just going to encourage them fibres to go back. And on the third turn, I can bring my thread over to meet the hackle. Pull everything back. Lock that into place and then just come in with a pair of scissors and remove the stem. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Sweep it all back and you can just tell that, you know, all this is going to generate a huge amount of movement in the water. Now, movement's great. What helps movement is water displacement and what do I mean by water displacement so booby eyes they, they um, 
will shift lots of water. So when it hits the water and I pull, initially there'll be quite a kerfuffle on the surface, which should attract any marauding trout that are uh, up feeding on fry. So what I'm going to be using is some silver foam. This is the HD foam from Uphaven and I've already made a tic tac out of it. If you're not sure what I mean by the tic tac, I'll stick a little info bar up on how I make my booby eyes, which should uh, clar clarify the whole thing. So I'm just looking for the little hole and I'm going to capture my booby eyes in my thread with two turns of thread. Then keeping tension on the thread, I can dress that up the shank of the hook and generally I do four or five turns one way excuse my fingers and four or five turns to other way then to finish off I get a few turns in front of the booby eyes now, what I'm going to do next is come in with my whip finish tool. And then I can trim that away. Now, just to uh, concrete that in place, I'm going to put some super glue in between the eyes which will soak down onto the thread then I'm going to turn the fly to my side where I can see it and get a little bit of super glue just in on the bottom thread wraps and this just helps with the longevity of the fly and there you have it the black mamba ready for a swim up at Rutland. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got some uh, tips out of that. Uh, doing the tailing is something I've picked up from uh, learning how to tie pike flies. It's really interesting technique. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button. I would really value your support. And I'll see you all next time.